Hey everyone, welcome back to Happy Farm Life. My name is Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist and a recent graduate, and I'm here to answer the questions you guys have been asking about the NAPLEX and MPJE so you can pass your board exams. I've got my trusty notebook here. I've been writing down your questions as they've been coming in, and I'm gonna answer them all for you today. Before we begin, just a reminder, please make sure you check out the NAPLEX video and the MPJE video that I've already done because I answer some of the other tips you may be asking, but here are the questions you guys have asked after that. So the first question is, what are the objectives that you were talking about during the NAPLEX video? And I apologize, that one, the objectives are actually the competency statements that are available on the NABP website. So I'll leave a link to those down below so you can check them out. But I do still recommend reading those for both the MPJE and the NAPLEX because those are the things that they care about. That is what they're gonna test over. And you don't need to be reading a bunch of laws or material that's not on the test. You need to really focus in on what they're gonna ask you. So the next question is, is a calculator allowed? And if so, what kind? You may be surprised by this one, but you are allowed to use a TI-30XS online only. So there is a version of that that they will give you a link to in your test and you can open that up and you will get that. You also get a labs page as well, so just an extra tip there. But here is the trick. You can get one of these basic calculators for your exam and I highly recommend you do because most of your calculations that we do as in pharmacy don't require a graphing calculator. For your basic calculations, you can use this bad boy right here. You have to ask for it. They will not just give this to you. Ask for a basic calculator. I bought this one for 98 cents to practice with. You can do, like I said, if you go to the RX prep book, most of your calculations you can do on this. And then you can do your more complicated one on the computer version because that's gonna take a little bit longer. But I will try to find a link to that online calculator and leave it down below for you guys. So you can practice, practice, practice because my next questions are also about calculations. First one is RX prep calculations in the book versus test bank, are they helpful? Yes, although I don't remember for sure, but I think that the questions that were in the book as well as the test bank were basically the same. So I honestly don't feel like the test bank really helped that much, but they map out the answers pretty nice in either one. So I think if you get the test bank from RX prep or the calculations in the book, you'll be fine. So how difficult were the calculations questions on the exam versus RX prep? I said in the NAPLEX video that the RX prep questions were harder, and that is true for the clinical questions, but I feel like for the most part, the questions for the NAPLEX were pretty similar to RX prep for calculations only. So those calculations questions are gonna be about the same, whereas the clinical questions are gonna be a little harder for RX prep versus the NAPLEX. And then the last question is, any tips for mastering calculations? Honestly, what's gonna help you the most is practice. I recommend 30 minutes to an hour a day. The closer you get to the test, definitely up into an hour. And doing those calculations over and over and over again, get to the point where you can do them in your sleep, get them to the point where you can do them in your head. Even if you're repeating the same questions, just going through the motions, practicing it on a calculator. If you have to use this type of calculator, use this type of calculator. If you have to use that graphing calculator online, use a graphing calculator online. Get used to whatever that system is and you will be golden. The next question is a tricky one and it is, was the MPJE more difficult or less difficult than the NAPLEX? Ooh, that one's a hard one. I feel like it's comparing apples to oranges because clinical content versus state law is very different. The NAPLEX is exhausting because it's six hours long and even though I was in there for like four and a half hours and I did take a break, it's still long. And the MPJE, it just makes you feel bad. Like if you walk out of the MPJE and you feel good, you are a minority because every single person that I'm friends with has walked out of every single MPJE they've taken and that felt great. Some of them feel better than others, but nobody feels like, woo, I just walked out of that and aced it. It's not a feeling you're probably gonna have. So if you feel bad coming out of either of those exams, so did I and I passed, it's okay. I think it boils down to what you're most comfortable with. I really liked law and I honestly felt a little more comfortable going into the law exam, especially for the state that I'm from, which is Missouri versus the NAPLEX, whereas Texas, I was a little more hesitant with the MPJE and it was harder than Missouri's because I didn't know the laws. That's just gonna be based on what your knowledge base is going into the exams. But NAPLEX, definitely more exhausting because it's just so freaking long. 
The next question is, how many weeks did you realistically prep for the MPJE? And I'm going to be honest, I prepped one week for the Missouri and one week for the Texas law. I had exactly a week between my NAPLEX and my Texas law, so that's really all the time I had because I finished the NAPLEX and then did my Texas law. For Missouri, I had done a little dabbling in it and then like did a solid week where I was studying that. I'm going to be honest, it was probably 30-ish hours of each. 25 to 30. I don't know that I actually got up to 30 on Texas, but definitely 25 to 30 hours of studying for both exams. So I wouldn't go by weeks because it depends on what you're doing. Like during my second round of testing, I was full-fledged in residency on orientation and doing rotations and had projects. So I was spending less time studying and more time at residency versus my Missouri law, which I was taking prior to starting residency. So for the NAPLEX, I'll tell you that I studied three weeks for it. So the difference here is I was studying that throughout the year. So anytime I was on a rotation and had a topic discussion, I would also read the RX prep chapter. So there were several chapters I had looked at at some point in the previous year, and those were more review chapters versus the chapters that I never went over on my rotations during topic discussions. The next question I got was, what do you think I should bring with me to test day? As little as possible. Pearson will make you take all of your stuff, put it in a locker. They're going to look at all of your jewelry. I have this necklace right here. As you can see, it's not a very big necklace. And they made me take this off because it was against the rules because it was too big. The ring that I have, they said that was too big. So they made me take my ring off. They're going to make you do all of that. What I do recommend for the NAPLEX, because you get a break and it's long, is to bring yourself a little snack. I had like peanut butter crackers in my bag. So bringing just some little snack with you to munch on in your break, just to give you some energy and refuel before you go back into the testing room. Next question is pre-MPJE and pre-NAPLEX, are they worth it? Honestly, I didn't know there was a pre-MPJE, so I can't tell you if that was worth it or not. I did take the pre-NAPLEX twice. I took it once for my school in December, and I took it a couple weeks, a week, a couple weeks, I can't remember, before I took the NAPLEX, and it gave me a good idea of where I was at. It is good for giving you an idea of where you are on your baseline, but it's not good to really identify too critically of what areas you're struggling in. They don't cover all the competency statements, for one. It does give you a chance to practice and see your timing. So how quickly are you able to get through calculations and that sort of thing in a real testing environment with the calculator that you're gonna use. I would say it's probably better a couple weeks out from your exam so you can really see where you need to hone in. I would say if you haven't studied yet, don't take it. It's not gonna be that helpful. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave links down below as well. The next question is, is the 2010 version of the DEA pharmacist manual the most up-to-date version? And unfortunately, yes, the DEA apparently doesn't wanna update us in 10 years, but that is the most updated version. And thankfully the Controlled Substance Act hasn't changed terribly much since then. Terribly much, that was awful grammar, guys. Ugh. It hasn't changed very much. So it's still helpful, I promise. Just trust me. Speaking of helpful resources, aside from the DEA pharmacist manual, the next question was what are the best prep materials for your NAPLEX and MPJE? So for your NAPLEX, I talk about this in both videos in more depth, so you can go there, but I'll just rattle them off and leave links down below in case you just want to check them out. NAPLEX is RX prep. I recommend the quizzes and not the videos. For MPJE, I will leave a list of state-specific resources, but I recommend pharmacyexams.com for any quizzes that you would like to take. It was super helpful, as well as the TLDR Pharmacy MPJE worksheet. And the last question is, I hope you're not still procrastinating, but what is the best way to beat procrastination? For me, it required me to take away my phone. I didn't have a TV. Take away my laptop, any form of entertainment outside of my lovely RX prep book, and that was all I left myself. And then I told myself if I studied for two hours, I could go to the pool. Reward yourselves, guys. Make sure you're taking breaks, but you just got to do it. You open the book, and that's the first step. Open the book. And this last one is a bonus. If I were to do it all again, what advice would I give you guys? And my best advice is to take frequent breaks. And remember, you went to pharmacy school for at least four years. That is a lot of time and energy investing in yourself, in your education, and in the education that you are going to provide to your patients in the future. 
Sometimes it's going to feel like you don't know things, but I promise if you dig deep in your brain, some of it's still there. Believe in yourself, be confident, and be so grateful that you passed pharmacy school and you're on to the next stage, which is taking the test. I know it's frustrating, but think about this. Once you're done, you're done. And with that, this video is done. So thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Also, you might want to check out that Netflix, that MPJE video, as well as my top 10 tips for transitioning from student to pharmacist. Good luck on your exam. You're going to rock it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.